during the holidays, I really do like to keep things simpler. I try and choose recipes that require less active time so I can spend more time with the ones that I love. One thing that helps me do this is my slow cooker. This past Thanksgiving, I gave my trusty slow cooker the job of cooking the Jiffy Corn Casserole, the ever delicious Jiffy Corn Casserole, and it turned out amazing. Offloading just one or two dishes to your slow cooker can really contribute to a calmer and simpler holiday and more time to spend with loved ones. Today, I'm sharing five recipes that are sure to lend a hand this holiday season. So I don't know about your kids, but on Christmas morning, they could basically care less about breakfast. I mean, obviously we wanna have something delicious and sweet, uh, but they have to open their presents first. So monkey bread is the perfect thing to make on Christmas morning because you can get it started in that slow cooker and it's gonna take a couple hours to cook. And that way you can kind of settle in, open some presents, and then your breakfast is gonna be ready when you are ready. You wanna start with a half a cup of brown sugar a half a cup of sugar and then one tablespoon of cinnamon and then I just poured mine all mixed up right into a gallon bag and then you want one container of southern style biscuits I have the Pillsbury brand but I've used like the Aldi brand in the past and that's been absolutely fine great value I'm sure it would work too and you want to cut each one into six pieces I did like two at a time it was a little bit easier that way and then I separated them out and then one half a cup of melted butter. So that's one stick of butter. I just did mine in the microwave. And then take each piece and dip it in the butter and then put it into your gallon bag. And so once they're all in there, you wanna take it and shake it up. You can see I was, it was, my, it was the morning <laughs> and I was shaking it up, giving it a little chance. And that's gonna cover everything in that cinnamon sugar mixture. I think alternatively you could use a bowl, but I love the idea of using the gallon bag because it's uh, you can just throw it away, there's no dishes. <laughs> and uh, it really does help to cover all those pieces of biscuit. And then make sure that your, your crock pot is well greased. I actually used butter in mine, but you could use sp cooking spray if you have it. And then pour the rest of the butter into the bottom of that pan too, because you can never have too much butter in this recipe. And then just pour, put every single one of those little dot, um, like dots or biscuits in there. And you do want to cover the entire bottom. So you don't necessarily want to pour it in there. I put every single one in. It took me maybe 15 minutes to do this. So you could always do this in the morning, either before everyone gets up or um, during like a little lull in the activity. And and then turn it on low for two to two and a half hours. I think mine was done in two. My crock pot always cooks a little bit fast. I don't know about yours, but you know, know your crock pot and then it's ready to go. And then I actually had some frosting. So I microwaved that frosting for about 30 seconds until it's more liquidy and then just poured it over the top. You could use cream cheese frosting. I just had regular vanilla and this was such a treat and such a Christmas worthy treat. And that crock pot is doing all that work for you uh, while you're enjoying yourself on Christmas morning. And this lovely video is sponsored by Good Chop. I receive the medium size box from Good Chop each month and I love it because I always know that I have high quality meats and seafood sourced from the US at the ready. So I don't always have to worry about what is on sale or what I can find at my local grocery store. Good Chop carries my favorite steaks, ribeye, and New York strip. My husband and I absolutely love these. And since the boxes are customizable, I tend to switch off each month which one I get and we get to kind of not get bored of the same old thing. And I do the same thing with my other choices so I can try new things and different recipes. I can always find something since Good Chop has over 60 high quality cuts to choose from. So for me, it's all about having meats and seafood at the ready so that I don't have to make as many trips to the grocery store, which I see as a real benefit by not spending extra time or money by getting distracted by other things that maybe I don't need. If you've been on the fence, about Good Chop, right now is the perfect time to try. Good Chop is offering my viewers a deal. Go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code Maria120 or click the link in the caption below to get $120 off across your first four boxes today. Go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code Maria120 or click the link in the caption below to get $120 off across your first four boxes today. Now for the next couple recipes, I was able to use some of my Good Chop meats, which is why I just love having them on hand so that I can make things whenever I need to. For this one, I used some of the boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and I was able to slide these in my slow cooker, not even fully defrosted. 
I just cooked them up on low for a couple of hours and that chicken was so delicious and so easy to shred. It was perfect for a dip. I also used this chicken in a Marry Me chicken that you'll see uh, next week too. So stay tuned for that, but the chicken's absolutely delicious. This is really wonderful. And so you can just shred it up or you could actually use, I've seen people use like a hand mixer before in a bowl. That's a super easy way to do it. But I always say I'm a glutton for punishment and just like to do it myself in the slow cooker. And um, it always takes a little longer than I think it will, <laughs> but it's perfect anyway. And then this buffalo chicken dip is seriously so easy. It's so perfect for a Christmas day treat that you know everybody will love, or even just to bring to a potluck. You want one package of cream cheese. You're gonna want two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. I put about a cup and a half in the crock pot and then I actually like baked mine real quick after. That's your choice on how you wanna do it. You can also serve this right in the crock pot so you could put it all in there. Then a half a cup of ranch dressing and a half a cup of hot sauce. You can use either the Frank's Red Hot or I had the Berman's just from Aldi. It's a little bit cheaper. And then put your cover on and cook this for about two hours on low. Or if you're in a rush like I was, I did an hour on high and it worked perfect. So either way will do for you. It's just gonna meld all those flavors together. And then I actually poured mine into an eight by eight container and sprinkled it with some, the rest of the cheddar cheese, the other half, and then baked that in the oven for about 10 minutes at 350, just to melt that cheese on top. And then I sprinkled it with some uh, chopped up scallions. Now you totally don't have to do that. You can just serve it right in the crock pot. Um, we were doing like a little Christmas tea decor so I thought it would look kind of cute that way but both are good and the flavors are there so super easy a great holiday treat and a great way to use some really really great chicken Ah, uh, the sounds of the holidays. <laughs> Those things are so fun though. The kids love them. This is another super simple one, bacon, green beans. This is a great side for your Christmas dinner. And I almost think of the crock pot kind of like my third arm sometimes, just something to kind of take something off my plate while I'm cooking everything else. For this, I am using the good chopped bacon. Any thick cut bacon will do, but this is particularly good. I find that with bacon, sometimes it's hit or miss. I mean, I'm still gonna buy the bacon at the store sometimes, but sometimes it's like cut really thin or it's just all fat. Uh, with a good chopped bacon, I have never been disappointed. It is always the highest quality. So that's just a disclaimer there on that, on how good it really is. So you just wanna cut your bacon into small bite-sized pieces. So you also need one small diced onion, and then we're gonna saute that onion with the bacon until that bacon is crispy and the onion is translucent. And then you wanna pour about a pound of fresh green beans into the bottom of your slow cooker. You could also use a couple of pounds depending on how many people you're cooking for. So I did a kind of a bacon heavy uh, green beans, but you really don't need to. And then you want one and a half cups of chicken broth, or you could use chicken bouillon here, whatever you have on hand. I happen to have the rest of some chicken broth on hand from Thanksgiving, so it was perfect. And then about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I'm not gonna add any salt to this dish because the bacon is already pretty salty itself. And then pour the onion and the bacon right into the green beans and make sure to get all the fat with it too because that is absolutely delicious and it's part of what's gonna make this taste so good once it cooks together. And then you wanna cook it on low for six hours or high for three hours. It really does take about three hours for those green beans to get fully cooked even if you're cooking on high. I know a lot of times I cut down my times but it did take that long for these. And they're so, so good. <laughs> There's so much flavor in this. I mean, where can you go wrong with bacon and onion and green beans? It's it's really fantastic. And it's a really great side dish that you did the work in the beginning and then you just set it and forget it. Now for a main course, I always like to choose something inexpensive. And this year we have pork tenderloin with a cherry glaze. Now I was able to grab my tenderloin on sale. It was actually cheaper than this price here. Mine was $1.97 a pound. So if you can find that, that's fantastic. At 2.3 pounds, that's less than $5 for this entire Christmas dinner. So very, very affordable. Now we're just gonna open this up and I'm gonna make my spice rub. We're using two tablespoons of brown sugar, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of chili powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, 
and one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. And then we'll do a teaspoon of salt and about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Mix all that together and then rub that all over your tenderloin. And then I refrigerated mine for a couple of hours so those flavors could really meld into the tenderloin. You could probably do that overnight too to make it easy on yourself. Get this hard part, quote unquote, out of the way uh, before the big day. And then when your tenderloins are ready, add them to the slow cooker and pour in a half a cup of chicken broth. You could also use chicken bouillon or you could use beef broth here if that's what you have on hand. And then cut about a quarter cup of butter into pats of butter and put that right over the top of the tenderloin. And then you can either cook this on low for two hours or cook on high for one hour. The tenderloin cooks very quickly. It's a very um, like thin cut of meat, uh, so that should be plenty of time. And then right before your tenderloin is about to be finished, you wanna make that cherry glaze or cherry sauce. You want a half a cup of cherry preserves. I found mine looks like Morello cherry. Um, I also think it would be good with raspberry, so up to you, but I use cherry. Then you wanna add in two tablespoons of vinegar and a quarter cup of honey. And then for seasonings, just a tiny sprinkle of nutmeg and a tiny sprinkle of cinnamon, so probably about a quarter teaspoon of each. And you wanna mix that together and bring it up to a simmer and let that go for about seven minutes. And we're gonna kinda of cook it down and reduce it and it makes a beautiful sauce to go with your pork. So this is also very festive to have that red to go over the pork. It has that like flavor of Christmas time with the nutmeg and the cinnamon and it just is so homey. For the pork, you just wanna slice it into, I guess they'd be called like medallions, like little uh, circles. And then we serve this with my Brussels sprouts and butternut squash that is now viral on Instagram at 3.8 million views. So if you haven't tried it, it is worth it. It is so good and definitely a great Christmas time treat. So I'll make sure to link that below for you too. And some mashed potatoes. So really this whole meal um, is really Christmas worthy. Next up, we have slow cooker fudge. This is insanely easy to make, so delicious and so, so, so beautiful. Now I did use a slow cooker liner, but if I were to do it again, I probably would not use a slow cooker liner just because you'll see through the process that it would have been better if I could just kind of scoop the fudge out with a spatula. The ingredients in this are super simple. You want two cups of either milk chocolate or semi-sweet chocolate chips. I use the semi-sweet because that's kind of what I prefer, but milk chocolate would be fine too. And then a quarter cup of heavy cream and a third a cup of honey. And I'm using my special technique where I spray the bottom of a measuring cup and then pour the honey in and it really helps the honey not stick to the bottom of the measuring cup. You wanna give this a stir and cook it on high for one hour. And then you wanna add a half a cup of white chocolate chips and a teaspoon of vanilla. And you just wanna give this a nice stir, make sure everything is melted, that white chocolate will melt right in. And then you wanna pour this into an eight by eight pan and you wanna make sure that it's either foil lined or sprayed down really well. Now, this is where I didn't like the liner because I was like, oh, I'll just squeeze it out, but it was really hot. So it didn't really work well to squeeze that out. I would have preferred to just take a spatula and scoop out the fudge mixture into my eight by eight pan. And then you wanna sprinkle this with a coarse sea salt if you can or if you have it. You could also use sprinkles. I think sprinkles would look beautiful on this this time of year, but I do recommend salting it too because there's something about that salty and sweet. And then you wanna allow this to cool completely for one to three hours. Once it's totally cool, you can cut it into squares and it is delicious. You can actually store it for up to five days in an airtight container. It's a great thing to give as a holiday treat or just serve on your holiday table. And that is it for slow cooker recipes today. I hope you have the most magical of holiday seasons and don't forget to check out Good Chop by clicking the link in the description box below. Say hi guys. Hi. hi. Say snow day. Snow day.